always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons.
the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How did he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord.
and reflect and make visible the grace of God in ways we wouldn't otherwise. And even though it feels like sacraments are about a small group of people, the candidate to be ordained, the couple getting married, it is both about them and about what God is saying through the promises that they're making and the way of life they are committing. So when I work with a couple on their wedding ceremony, I encourage them to pick scripture readings that reflect how their love reflects the love of God. However, Alex and Leo, since you are getting married during a regularly scheduled Holy Eucharist, for better or worse, you have to make do with the regularly scheduled. <laughs> In case you were wondering why we were reading about death and yeah, so <laughs> and so just as the marriage, the sacrament of marriage is about the love between the two of you and the love between God and God's people. Teachings on how to live our lives can be helpful for living as married people. And teachings for living as married people can teach us about being in other kinds of relationships. And some of today's readings do remind me of some frequently quoted marriage advice, especially when we hear them through the you have heard that it was said, that I say to you approach that Jesus takes in the Sermon on the Mount. Take the letter to the Ephesians, for example. You have heard it said, do not go to bed angry. But I say to you, be angry but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. When we remember sin as a force that separates us from God and from the people of God, that reminds us that it's okay to get angry, to be angry, as long as it doesn't cause us to grow apart or turn away to become more distant from God and one another. And even when anger leads to distance and separation, even when sin breaks relationships, we still have a choice. We can choose to turn back to God and to one another, to confess and work out a way toward reconciliation. We can learn to listen, to understand, to make the repairs necessary for being in right relationships. But if we continue to act out of anger, if we are grounded in anger and not in love, we are giving the devil a foothold in our lives. That gives the devil room to work in and through us in the world, and we will come to embody the adversary who works against God instead of the advocate, the Holy Spirit, God. You have heard it said, if you don't have something to, good to say, don't say it at all. But I say to you, let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. There is a difference between something good and something hard, between evil talk and constructive words for the purpose of building up. We don't want to be hurtful or confrontational, but if we don't talk about what's troubling us at all, that is also a form of speaking falsehood, because that means we aren't speaking the truth. That also creates a distance. That also gives the devil room to work. So we start by fostering a spirit of collaboration, working together until it feels like we are members of one another. It might seem like this goes without saying when it comes to marriage and family, but it's always helpful to remember there is no need to keep score to a long team. Working alongside one another also gives us the chance to recognize someone's gifts and encourage them to grow into those gifts. And when we have a better appreciation for the perspectives and experiences they bring, we will find it increasingly easier to put away both all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together. The more we can be kind, tenderhearted, and forgiving in a not condescending or passive aggressive way, the less likely the person we're speaking to will think we're trying to tear them down, and the more they will hear us helping to build them up. 
the more we can extend grace, the more likely others will find what we say to be useful. And lastly, to paraphrase the gospel, Jesus said, your ancestors, your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. But I tell you, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And the letter to the Ephesians calls on us to be imitators of God. It's not just telling us to read and discuss the letter. It is telling us to, quote unquote, practice incarnation. To put some flesh behind those words. As theologian and writer Barbara Brown Taylor observed of the various accounts of the Last Supper, Quote, with all the conceptual truth and the universe at his disposal, Jesus did not give them things to think about when he was gone. Instead, he gave them concrete things to do, specific ways of being in their bodies, together, that would go on teaching them what they needed to know when he was no longer around to teach them. End quote. The difference between theory and practice is flesh being in our bodies together. And as we take in Christ's body and blood, let us put our body and blood behind his words to live as he did. God brings us physically together so that we can practice the messy and hard work it takes to put away falsehood, to be angry without breaking relationships, to say what is only useful for building up, and so on. There are opportunities to practice all this in church, at home, at work, and definitely in a marriage. In a moment, when we pray the prayers of the people, we will pray on behalf of Alex and Leo and ask God to quote, make their life together a sign of Christ's love to this sinful and broken world, that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness, heal guilt, and joy conquer despair. That feels like a lot to put on a marriage. And is a helpful reminder that the boundless grace and love of God are made visible in small, daily moments of grace and love that we extend to one another. These moments may seem small, but they can mean everything. They can be everything. Small acts of repair keep divisions from growing deeper and wider. Forgiveness, a kind that is healing to all involved, can keep us from being defined by shame and guilt. And joy shows us that there is more to life than despair. It gives us hope that there is another way. It helps us choose to walk in another direction. The more we practice incarnation, the more we choose to turn toward unity, forgiveness, and joy, instead of estrangement, guilt, and despair, the more we show each other that sin and brokenness isn't as inevitable as we fear. The more we live as Jesus lived, the more we will know, not just theoretically, but concretely, that the love and grace of Christ aren't just pretty words or comforting words. Through the sacraments, we commit ourselves in confirmation to a Christian tradition, in ordination to a calling, in marriage to this other person. We commit to choosing them every day, in prosperity and adversity, and to keep walking a path that will make real the kingdom of God on earth as it is.
those hands sort of on either side. Kind of like baptism, we invite kids to come up during baptism. We invite the kids to come up and stand around the dock when we do baptism. Now that's fine to invite the kids up and come and stand around when we do the wedding. Okay. Who presents this woman to be married to this man? In the name of God, I, Alex, take you, Leo, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. Bless, O Lord, these rings to be a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
I am and all that I have, I honor you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Leo have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world you have made and for which upon your son gave his life, and especially upon this man and this woman whom you make one flesh and holy matrimony. Amen. Grant that their wills their wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Amen. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, that their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and in one another all the days of their life. Amen. Give them grace when they hurt each other, to recognize and acknowledge their fault, and to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Amen. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to this sinful and broken world, that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness, evil guilt, and joy conquer despair. Amen. Bestow on them, if it is your will, the gift and heritage of children, and the grace to bring them up to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Amen. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection that they may reach out in love and concern for others. Amen. Grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Amen. As we pray for Alex and Leo, we also pray that you will guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, and that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Amen. Grant, Almighty Father, that all who confess your name, they may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Amen. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Carlos Sanchez, and give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them in joy of your salvation. Amen. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Grant that the bonds of our common humanity, by which all your children are united one to another, and the living to the dead, may be so transformed by your grace that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, where, O oh Father, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing upon this man and this woman. Defend them from every enemy, lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows in their life, and in their death. And finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. 
God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace, that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come, have life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
And now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. 
And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ is alive. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you this gift. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Lord,
Standing or kneeling, let us pray together the post communion prayer that comes on page 10 of your bed. O God, giver of all that is true and lovely and gracious, we give you thanks for binding us together in these holy mysteries of the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that by your Holy Spirit, we know the house. Closing him is hymn 300. 